Belgium is returning the remains of the icon of Congo's anti-colonial movement to his family. A single tooth is all that is believed to remain of Patrice Lumumba after his assassination in 1961. An official ceremony to hand back the tooth is being held in Brussels. We'll speak to our correspondent there after this report on who Patrice Lumumba was and how he died. In this art studio in Brussels stands one of the greatest figures of the African independence movement. This larger-than-life-size statue of Patrice Lumumba is a tribute to him from the Congolese community in Belgium. Lumumba played a significant role in the transformation of the Congo from a Belgian colony into an independent republic. Uh, Patrice Lumumba fought for the freedom of his country and he was killed for that. And uh, the, the country never really recovered from that loss until today. Patrice Lumumba became the Congo's first prime minister after it gained independence in 1960. But he was only in office for a few months before he fell out with the country's former colonial ruler, which led to him being ousted in a coup, imprisoned, tortured and later executed. Ludo de Witte is a Belgian author who wrote a book about Lumumba's murder. The book reveals the Belgian government's complicity and details how Lumumba and two of his associates were executed in a forest and how their bodies were disposed. It was done during the night, so there were a lot of uh, villagers who um, were very suspicious. And so uh, very quickly, um, uh, Belgians and Qataris decided to dig up the bodies and to have the body completely destroyed. And so they cut them in, into pieces and uh, dissolved them into um, a barrel of uh, um, uh, sulfuric acid. A Belgian officer who was involved later confirmed the book's account including the part about him removing Lumumba's tooth and keeping it as a trophy. After the release of the book in 91, a parliamentary commission of inquiry concluded that Belgium had, quote, moral responsibility for Lumumba's killing. Activism has continued here to force the country to fully recognize and atone for its brutal colonial past that led to the deaths of millions in the DRC. There's been some progress. After years of activism and debate, the Brussels municipality opened this square, named after and in honour of Patrice Lumumba. Authorities said that this symbolic gesture was intended to reflect Belgium's colonial past. Activists now use the space to tell people about Patrice Lumumba's life and legacy. The, the main thing that he was assassinated for was to erase him politically and to erase his memory. So. Uh, having the square is a, a, a way of uh, reviving his, uh, his memory. Patrice Lumumba's tooth is all that was left of him after he was killed. Belgium returning it to his family is being welcomed as a first step. We hope it to be the beginning of the recognition that colonialism was something wrong was a crime uh, against humanity and that we can start to install uh, a kind of uh, politic of reparation. It's taken decades for the truth about the circumstances of Patrice Lumumba's murder to emerge. Congolese people at home and abroad hope it will take less time for their nation and their hero to get justice. And on location at Petit Sablon Square, where the ceremony is taking place, is DW correspondent Christine Mundo, who filed that report. Uh, Christine, tell us about what's happening at the ceremony today. So, Nick, Patrice Lumumba's tooth has been in the Belgian prosecutor's office here in Brussels since 2016 when it was taken from the daughter of the officer who had held it as a trophy. Uh, in 2020, at the height of the Black Lives Matter protests, uh, the king finally responded to a letter by Patrice Lumumba's daughter where she was asking, or had been asking, uh, for the return of her father's remains. And, of course, the bureaucracy, the pandemic, led to several delays, and the day has finally come. Uh, the family is going to be received uh, by a, a delegation of uh, a Brussels, uh, Belgian officials uh, he headed by the Prime Minister. The federal prosecutor himself is going to hand over the tooth uh, that was, uh, it's been placed in a specially made casket uh, and was brought to the venue uh, in a hearse. And how significant is this ceremony uh, to, to Belgium? Is it the country's moment of reckoning with its colonial past, do you think? 
Well, Nick, the, the Belgian Prime Minister said that this was a turning point uh, for, 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 for this country's relations with its former uh, colony, the Congo. But just recently, the Belgian royals uh, were in the Congo, and the king, whilst there, expressed uh, what he called was his deepest regrets for, for the colonial era. We're talking about a time where about 10 million Congolese people are said to have died of starvation. They were, they were killed of disease uh, in the first 23 years of Belgium's uh, rule in the Congo. He expressed his deep regrets regrets, but he didn't apologize. Uh, so a lot of people are questioning uh, the, the, the sincerity uh, of, of all of this. Um, uh, we also have to point out, uh, Nick, that uh, beyond uh, this, this returning of, of these remains, uh, the Congo uh, is, is, is in deep distress. After the mur murder of uh, Patrice Lumumba, a, a dictatorship that lasted over 30 years followed, uh, where the continu country continued to be pillaged. And people in the Congo see that as a result of Belgium's involvement. Those who were involved in the murder of Patrice Lumumba uh, were never prosecuted uh, themselves. So there's a lot of skepticism, but some do hope that this is the start uh, of something wider. Oh. Well, thank you for being with us on this historic day. DW correspondent Christine Mundwa.